Hi, this is IBC. Uh, we're going to be talking today. I'm going to walk people through a couple of things about my system. Uh, the thing I'm going to really focus on is how I'm setting up the uh, CQC uh, interface to be able to uh, take a look at control which uh, lights are going to be part of which scheduled events. I'll show you the scheduled events that I have, and then I'm going to walk you through how to even enable and disable those events. Uh, if you don't use CQC, this is going to be pretty boring for you, and it might be a long video. Screen here. These are the. I have screens that I use most of the time, right? Um, what I'm doing, and these are, I have to scroll up and down to show you. Uh, what I did is I just started building out a much more simplistic set of screens, and that's what I'm going to walk you guys through. So, for example, um, where's the timer right here? All right. So, God, this thing takes forever to boot up these things here. So these things aren't in heavy use, so hopefully we don't find a huge bug. Uh, in these, um, let me turn off this. Hide myself. There we go. All right. Um, so, um, what I have is, so first of all, actually, you guys are familiar with the event viewer. So, what I have is I have a couple of these events here uh, sunrise, sunset, shutdown is the one that's going to be most interesting. And inside this shutdown event, which I run at 12 30 every morning, um, I have what you guys would expect, which is a whole bunch of field rights, you know, on this schedule, right? The problem I was having was the wife was constantly tweaking which specific lights and which specific devices to uh, enable or disable. Um, and it was things, and a lot of times, it's like around here we celebrate Halloween. Crazy on this block. Then we switch to Christmas, and people may or may not be around, right? Then when Christmas is done, we have a different set of lights. And then when daylight savings hits, so like, it felt to me like, um, it's what you want. The wife has taken advantage of the fact that this is so flexible. Um, but she was constantly tweaking, well, now I want these lights on. But no, now I want these lights on. Now I want this at this time. Now I want that at that time. Oh, you know what? We're going on vacation. So I kind of got, and, and I'm on the travel shot right now. So I got sick of it, and I said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a screen where, um, and I know it's kind of hard to see here. Actually, I can pull this up in the here so um, what you can do is you can pull up this screen and then you press a button and is it included or not included in that particular sequence right um, and so and, and I may want to come up with a different icon that is what I came up with first so this doesn't you know if it's got a line through it that doesn't mean it's turned off that just means it's not included in that event um, so that's kind of what I was going to walk you through Jason this is what you were looking at see how I do, right? Almost exactly, yeah. Yep, okay. Yep. And uh, Mark and Mick, uh, I'm, I'm happy to walk through any other part of my system. Let me start with this part. I'm um, not sure how long this will take. Um, and, and the screen normally is bigger than this. This is my phone screen resolution, so obviously it's not going to fit on my laptop here. Is there a new view? I can't see the whole thing. All right. So, uh, Actually, really simple. Uh, what I did was in the I created a variables driver field here, and let me go to the client interface, and I will let this pull up. So what I did is I created a whole ton of these um, variable fields. They're all boolean, right? And so and I and I, brought, and I started off with just um, and I changed the name of it to morning office sunrise. So I start off with sunrise, shutdown, and sunset for every different field. So what you see here is these are Boolean fields, um, but I make sure I persist them to survive a uh, system shutdown, system reboot, right? And then when you go to where is it here? Uh, when you go to this, all this is is a simple checkbox with it. So you know you just go create a variable checkbox field, right? And then, how do I make this Zoom thing go away? All right. So here, when you uh, uh, create that che variable checkbox widget, then you just pick that variable. Oh, crap. It's not a variable checkbox widget. What am I saying? Field checkbox widget. Field checkbox widget. So then, um, 
you just pick that field that you have set up in the variables driver, right? Like control, I too many variable drivers. So you pick whichever field that is, right? And then I'll open up one of these things. Um, and for the field checkbox, if it's true, uh, and you make it false, right? And if it's false, you make it true. So it's a real simple toggle. So you see here we were on, what did I check? Front string, right? The front string, morning off, if it's false, make it true. If it's true, make it false. Easy enough so far? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So now that that's set, then that's a real basic toggle for each of these. And, and I will say this is was a pain in the butt to create all these different. Um, and it really, it actually has my kids' names in here for the webinar. I just pulled my kids' names um, out of here. Um, and I'll gray out the, the thing when I publish the video. Um, so this thing certainly took a hell of a lot of time. Uh, and what I would say is if you're building this thing yourself, create one. Because then what you can do is by copying and pasting it, then at least you pick up your, your image settings here, right? So you don't have to manually change the freaking image for whatever this is, 25 times 3, right? And this is actually just for my main sunrise sunset shutdown. Um, I'm going to have another one for uh, vacation. I just haven't had the patience to build that out yet. So then what you do in your event, easily enough, is... You can take it, and this isn't fully built out, but then all you do is, oh, you know what? I'll actually build one for you right now for the front string light, right? So then you just do if system equals right click, insert field, and uh, what did I not do? I think I didn't do front string light, right? So, uh, so you go to the variables driver, and we'll do front string light, front string. Sunrise. And you want to do this by value. So what this means is you want to have the value of whatever this is rendered, not the actual name, front spring, morning off, right? And so then you don't have to remember, for those of you that we've been using CQC for years, you have to remember, you have to, remember to use a dollar, to use a percent, what the hell do you use? So this will remember it for you. And then you just compare that to true, right? So if this is part of the, oh crap. Actually, I just realized this is the shutdown sequence. So I want to pick the front string for shutdown. Or whatever front string is not. So then if this is true, then you just add in a uh, field right for Lighting. Which one's this? Okay, that's the light. So, when you have too many lighting drivers, on stairs is an elf driver. <laughs> um, that's what that was, right? Yeah, so the front stairs, I have control to the elf. So, literally, that's all you have to do, right? So that way, and now what's going to happen is, um, and I'm going to have to build out one of these if then for every single one of my lights. So I'm going to have 25 of these things in here, one for every one of, where's my screen here? My screen is this one. So every single one of these things is going to have a single if then in the shutdown sequence. And so what I, what, what I was planning on doing physically was I was actually going to blow away my, um, my existing sunrise, because right now my sunrise is real simple, right? I just manually pick the light that the light currently wants to see. So what my plan was, was it was to take the shutdown. Where the hell is the shutdown going? Um, was to, as soon as I built out all these if-thens, I was going to do a copy all and then paste all into the sunrise, so that way all I have to do is come in here and change the specific um, value, you know, from in, instead of writing it to shut down, you know, I could write it to sunset on or morning off. So there's really not all to including a light in a given sequence. Does that make sense, Jason? 
<clears throat> it makes sense. It doesn't sound like it makes sense. Well, it makes sense with the way that you're doing it. I'm just trying to think about how to reuse it. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, well, so what I would say is, again, how many lights are you going to look to include or not include into your various sequences? 30? 30. Yeah, so it's about the same number as me. So you see here, I mean, yeah. that's just a pain in the ass, right? Oh, I'm sorry, and here's the other thing, is there are certain lights that are not going to be optional, right? So um, I have, of my, actually I think I have 30 lights, but of the 30 lights, some, like in shutdown, I'm not going to give the option. The backyard, I'm always going to turn that off at 1230, right? The basement, the three basement lights, I'm always going to turn that off. So this will never be able to be disabled because there's no scenario in which I want those things on at 1230. So that is one way to cut down the amount of work is to only have uh, if for the ones that you'd actually want on your field, right? Yeah. Um, and what I, so let me show you then the lot, and like I said, it's, uh, it's a lot of setup work, but actually I, I've done this before. I actually did this for my irrigation system. Uh, and once you set it up, it's so much easier to, to maintain. So for example, the vacation mode, um, the way the, come on dude, why is the vacation mode not showing here? It's open, right, right there. Oh, it is open, <laughs> an idiot, that's why, this is in it. Okay, so ba the same exact concept then is, I had a variable for vacation mode, right? Um, and so that screen is, here, where it's the same, I know, thank you. Um, it's the same concept where I have a checkbox, and I'll just toggle the checkbox. So that would be, uh, what do I call that? So you just, you know, you toggle this thing on and off, right? All right. Um, and then on your, in your um, action, Right, just you bury everything inside the if then. Again, it's a lot simpler than you would think. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> okay. Let me ask Mark. you a question. What happens if you yeah. want to yeah, change okay. something? When you, what do you mean, change something like? Uh, add a light like in. You want add, add something in. in. Oh, well, the problem is, so the thing is, every time you want to add a, a new light into the sequence, um, you're going to have to come back to this the admin screen. console. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have to. Yeah. So that's a good way to put it, right? You're going to have to come in, add a new row in here, add three new uh, variable driver fields in here, yeah. and then add it to your shutdown sequence. So it is a lot of work, but to me, that's a one-time pain, as opposed to you know, realistically, what's the other option if you think about it, right? The other option is if you add a brand new light to your house and you want to include that in your shutdown sequence, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to come in here. And this is what I was faced with every six to 12 weeks was, oh, we just added a new light. Oh, okay, crap. I got to remember to uh, bring it in here and, and add it in via this way to my um, on this sequence. And then I was doing this, um, you know, disable, enable, if I wanted to include it. And this is something only I could do. So to me, when you add a new light, this approach I'm walking you through isn't actually any more work that, you, that, that you'd have to do than if you just added in a new light and didn't do this thing. But if you, if you do it this way, then from here on out, anybody with access to the template viewer can include or, dis or, include or uh, remove a light from that sequence. So to me, that's the upside of it. But, you know, the problem is, is I've built up my schedule and my life over the last two years, three years, actually, or longer, right? Um, well, the ISY, I changed everything a year ago. It was hell so I had to change all my events, right, uh, to reference the new light driving, lighting driver field. If I had just set this up then, it wouldn't have been that much pain. So. Can you guys hear me? You have, go ahead. I'm sorry, what? Can you guys hear me? Uh, Mick, I'm sorry, say that one more time. 
Can you guys hear me all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, I, I mean, do a similar... You, if you try to speak with an American accent, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember to roll my R's a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I do a similar thing with my lighting system, except I use a macro, and I just dynamically read through all the fields and then turn that field off. Um, to exclude lights, I had a string list in a variable driver and if it matched anything in that string list, then it didn't turn that light off. So that's another way it could be done yeah. too. Yeah. Well, that uses uh, CML, right, Nick? Yes, yes. Being a macro, it's yeah. CML. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't have so that in my issue line. is, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't know CML and that's my problem. <laughs> And the other comment I'd make would right. be with that um, screen that you did where you can select sunrise, sunset, shutdown, um, I do something similar with some other pages and I give the widget a name and then when the widget loads I dynamically link that to a field and then I would create that whole table with um, all dynamically being created at the time it loads so that if I added a new light I just edit the um, on load uh, actions and give it some variables in there and that way I never have to touch any of the graphical aspect after it's been created. That's nice dude. <clears throat> Jason, you, you, uh, you know object oriented programming don't you? I, I mean I, I haven't touched that in 20 years so there's, it takes me forever I mean, to learn it again. I know it in the terms that I know it. I, I don't know it in the terms that I'm ever going to sit down and do something with it. Uh, no, Mick, that's certainly so much easier. It's unfortunately beyond my current level of memory. I remember knowing yeah, how yeah, <laughs> It's easy, though, when you share it. Hint, hint. Yes. Well, that, the way I do it, it makes it very easy to share because you're only editing in one place. And that's just putting field names in and descriptions. And I do things like where you've got this row here for Den, I'd have that as um, description four as the widget ID. And then in my on load action, if I've got a value in there, it would be the value that's shown. But if the string length is zero, then I just hide that whole row. So as the template loads, it dynamically goes through everything in the on-load action and creates a whole whole image. Yeah. And Mark and Jason, I'm not sure if you know what he's talking about, but um, I'll ask where that freaking thing is. That's kind of mistake. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it, that's very powerful. Yeah. That is certainly an awesome way to do it, Mick. It keeps making me want to learn female. Find another time. Oh, that None of that CML, that's all just action based to do it with what you've done. Yeah. But you know, you're you're then keeping track of XY coordinates and some sort of a loop. I mean it's it's I've done a fair no. amount of uh No, you're not doing C anything. That, no? No. No, so can you click on front string? the text front string. Yep. Now see up the top where the widget ID is blank, I would give that a, a widget ID descript, description one or uh, yeah, just DESC one. Then if you go to the on load, so double click on your template background and go to the on load action, click on the um, command, and see how description one, we can then set the text. So if you go set text, and that's where I then type in this text that I'd want to appear there, which would be whatever you've got there now, front string, I think it is. Yeah, maybe your line, so, sure. So then when that template loads, the text that you have put in there is what would get written to that, to that, um, widget. Now, it wouldn't have to say front string, it, could just, it would just be DESC, uh, just so you can see it on the screen and, and do anything. And the only place you would edit anything 
on this template would be in this on load and you would have potentially 20 odd descriptions here DSC one two three four five continuous and then you would and if that was blank then I'd have um, an if statement if if uh, DSC one by value is nothing then I would set its hidden state I would set it to a state of being hidden so that it wouldn't show up on the page so you predefine the XY coordinates in the widget the XY coordinates are all set by yes placing them on the screen and then you give it a name and then you tell then you, within the onload you just you assign what values you want to that widget Okay, okay, that makes it's more sense. It's still a fixed size and you're hiding and showing things. Yes, exactly. Yes. It's not like it's 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 not like it's able to create them and assign the locations. That would be significantly more complicated. Yes. Possibly doable, but this certainly works. And, and once you've set this up <laughs> once, if you wanted to create another one or share it with someone, it's very easy. And they just come into this on load um, area of the the IV of this page and edit whatever they need to edit in there. And similarly, you would... Hey, uh, Mick, Mick I, I, I got a question for you, Mick. So I'm trying to figure it out right now. How is it that I could do an if this description is blank? Or, or uh, what was the if that you said you were using? Uh, yeah, I was... What was I doing? Um, Uh, maybe I was assigning to a variable, uh, a local variable, and then if the local variable was... Got it. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. So, yeah, if the system... Yeah, the... Okay. No, no, that's fine. We, we, we can figure that out later. Yeah, if, if, the, if, if I, I would assign it to a local variable, the description to a local variable, if the local variable had a value or was not blank, then I would write that value to that widget. But if it was blank, I would right. then hide set the hit that widget to a hidden state. And similarly you could then link the fields for your all your checkboxes, your field checkboxes. If the description is right. not blank, then link the first checkbox to whatever field you want, the second checkbox to whichever field, and the third checkbox to whatever field. And if it is blank, then make those widgets hidden as well. Interesting. That's cool. That is another way. I, I could try and set and one I'm up quickly. I have this, and I'm glad I have this, yeah, I'm glad I have this recorded so I can see. What happened? I'll, um, I'll have a go setting up one quickly with a couple of lines, so, and that's, uh, I'll send it to you guys or post it up on the forum so you can have a look at it. Yeah. Cool. So let me do this. Any qu any more questions on this? Because what I might actually do is pause the recording and then we can start another one for the next topic. Uh, hold on. Any, any Tell me how you... Yeah. yeah. Save it. How do you save it? Sorry, save what? You don't. Simply checking the checkboxes is just an immediate field write. Yes. The checking sorry. the checkboxes is writing to the variable drivers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So what happens is, so hold on, how do we do this here? You can see this. Try and render multiple screens at once on my little monitor. And so I will do it this way. And then light. And Then I will go here, variable white, oh, variable right there. All right, so you see here, and I'll make it really actually yeah, white. I see it, front string warning off. True. All right. Oh, yeah, so what happens is, whatever, BR and washer is sunset on. Where's the, oh, of course, that's one I can't see. What can I see? Den. All right, I can see the den. So that is the top three, all P3 are false, so and then it's down there. All right, so let's see here, you click this button, and then it instantly flips it. So as soon as you press that, it saves, and not only that, so it changes this 
variable driver field, right? So the second you do that, and then because these things are persisted, persist yes, um, then even if the system reboots itself, it'll remember the last state that I had. So it's not like you set it up and the system reboots and you lose it all. Okay. <clears throat> so I think have you, uh, I could have you, have, have, adapt you, have, you, have you used the variable driver field where if you, you know, if you add a new one, right, then you type in whatever and pick, yeah. you can even pick a, a list, yeah, so then. Yeah. Yeah. Have you used the variable driver, he asks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while, but yeah, so that makes sense. So then you could just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking through a different scenario. You could just have it static and just do the exact same thing you're doing and it would work. Cool. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah you're talking about for your, for your usage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.